What are the deep dark secrets of the brand new Trello Growth Biome? Well, before we can get into that, what even is this? Cherry Grove. Well, as a part of Minecraft 1.20, a brand new forest biome has been added to Minecraft, that being the Cherry Grove. And with that, we have been introduced to the brand new tree, the Cherry Blossom. Now, this new tree is only found within these new Cherry Groves, and it's probably the most unique tree variant ever. As its dark purple trunks grow in patterns unlike any other, and its low lying, dense pink leaves emit some sort of strange pink particles, which, as of today, no other trees do. But not only is the surface appearance very strange for these cherry blossoms, when the inside of this tree is cut open, even more oddities are revealed, as the cores of these brand new cherry blossoms are bright pink, which no other blocks in the game currently are. And so it's because of that that we're introduced to a wide variety of brand new pinkwood block variants. And these vary from brand new doors to brand new boats and even new signs as well. But this new tree and all the wood block variants that come along with that aren't the only things that came with this cherry growth biome. As this biome is also home to a brand new flower, that being the pink petals, which almost entirely cover these massive cherry growth biomes. Now these pink petals are very annoying to build around, but they do add quite a lot to the atmosphere of this biome, and it is quite a large part as to why, in my opinion, the cherry grove is one of the best looking biomes currently in the overworld. And so now that we know what the cherry grove biome is, what are its secrets? Does it hold a secret structure? Does it have a hidden hint to a future dimension? Is there a secret story about this place? Well, let's find out. First, does it hold a secret structure? This impressive looking biome is the newest biome to Minecraft 1.20, and so surely it must have some sort of new structure within it, right? I mean, we have all these brand new blocks, so it would make sense for there to be a structure, but if you thought that, you would be wrong. Because as of recording, there are no structures in the Cherry Grove biome, which is rather strange. And so, it raises the question as to, was there once a structure in the Cherry Grove biome? And well, I think maybe there was. As maybe, just maybe, there may have one day have been a village in the Cherry Grove biome, where Cherry Villagers might have thrived on tourism and farming and would have been able to control this beautiful biome. But if that was truly the case, and there was once Cherry Grove Villagers, then what would they look like? Well, here's what I think. To start off with, just like all other villagers, there will be a town centre right in the middle of this village, but it will be made from the cherry wood, with a bell incorporated into the centre. And then there will be many different paths leading out of this town centre in all different directions, which the rest of the village will be built around. Okay, great, we now have a basic outline, but what would the houses of this cherry village look like? Well, there would likely be a very simple blocky design, just like many other villages are, but of course they would be built using the cherry wood. But now these houses wouldn't just be plain boring boxes, as they would have a unique roof style, as every village has their own unique roofs to match their environment, and the cherry grove is no different to that. Now for their roofs, they would likely need something curved, as the constant build up of pink petals falling down from their trees probably wouldn't be too good for the villagers living within those houses, as the weight of those petals over time could lead to their houses collapsing and them dying. But at the same time, these roofs also can't be too curved either, as the cherry blossom trees do have quite low hanging leaves, which the villagers probably wouldn't want to destroy. And so it's because of both of these factors that I imagine the roof for this house would look something like this. Now onto the interior, they would likely have the same basic layout with a bed and a chest on the corner. And so that would be the most common house within the Cherry Village. But there would also be other houses in the village as well. For example, there might also be a few larger versions of that house within the village, and they might look like this. 
as they would have the same blocky style, but would likely be a bit taller, and would have roughly the same roof design. And so that bigger house, in combination with that smaller house, would make up the majority of the buildings within that village. But again, even though those made up most of the buildings within that village, they aren't the only buildings there, as there are also speciality houses within each village. And well, for this cherry village, I made three. The first was a fisherman's hut, which was very similar to that of the first smaller house. But this fisherman's hut was on stilts by the water, which would help when the water levels rise during storms, and thus would keep the fishermen safe. And on the inside of those fishermen huts were barrels in the corners of the building, as that way the fishermen had something to use after a long day of fishing. Then the next speciality house for the Cherry Grove Village was the cartographer's house. Now these houses tend to be quite stretched out, and well I decided to ex exaggerate that effect with this house, making it three times longer than the average house. And on the inside was a small checkerboard carpet, just like many other cartographer houses have, and many cartographer tables. And finally was the Fletcher. Now normally for these villagers they are just given actual houses, but really that doesn't make all that much sense, as the Fletchers are making bows and arrows and so I decided to make their work areas outside, as when the villagers ever have to use a bow inside. And so that would be all the houses within the Cherry Village. But wait, we aren't done just yet, as there are also farms and animal pens in every village as well. Now, the animal pens within this Cherry Village would likely be quite similar to that in other villages, in that it would be a sectioned off area within that village that has piles of hay bales and an area for drinking water. However, the Cherry Grove Village's animal pens would be quite unique, as to keep out those pink petals from falling into the animal pens and potentially poisoning them if they ate them, I believe that an addition of a flat roof might be needed for the animal pens, as that would hopefully keep the animals safe. As for the farms, well they would likely have to be built in a similar way, in that there would just be a normal farm, maybe filled with some beetroot or wheat, but it would have to have an additional roof above as with that roof, no pink petals should fall into their crops. And maybe even for some extra safety, they might add some trapdoors on their water. And finally in the village were the unique lampposts, which would be placed all throughout the village just to add some light at night, and keep the villagers safe from zombie spawning. And so with all of that complete, this is what I imagine a cherry blossom village in Minecraft 1.20 might look like. And so the question is raised as to what happened to them, where are they now, and what is their story? Well, to understand all of that, we need to go back in time, back to when the villagers were merely just a sailing society. It was a time millions of years ago, and the villagers were just sailing the vast open oceans, fishing all day for food. Now at that point, life was very hard for all the villagers out there in the ocean, as they were solely relying on the tides to bring fish closer to them, and when that didn't happen, well, they would just starve out in the middle of the ocean. And so it was because of that that many fleets of ships were beginning to settle on land, where they could start farming crops which provided a much more stable source of food, and would also be where they would start building what would later become the villages. And this was starting to happen all across the world in many different biomes at that time. But there was one biome where that just wasn't happening, and that biome was the cherry groves, as they were typically only very high up on mountains, and so the sailors could see these pink smudges in the distance, and although many wondered what it was, none would ever be able to go and investigate, as it would just be impossible for them to scale a mountain back then, when they just didn't have the resources. 
Well, that was the case until one day when a small fleet of ships found a Charigrove biome right at sea level, which they could go and investigate. And so all very curious as to what this strange pink forest was, they anchored out their boats not too far away and rowed out to the coast. And when they stepped foot onto that cherry growth biome, their lives changed forever. As what they saw was just magical to them. As the pink petals that they were stepping on were just so soft, it was unlike anything that they had ever felt. And the cherry blossom, well, they were just shocked to see it, as they never thought that any trees could be pink. And this place, well, it was something that they could only dream about. But this was no dream. This was real life to them. And so they all loved it there. So much so that that fleet decided to stop exploring the ocean and to instead make this new Cherry Grove their new home. Which all of them did. As they, working hard over the next few weeks as a group, were able to build the first Cherry Blossom Village. Now, news of this magical village spread all across the world, and so it wasn't too long before almost everyone in the entire world knew about it. And so it was because of that that many would come to visit, and they too would just be mesmerized by the cherry blossoms, and would instantly have the desire to live there. But there was a problem with that, as there just wasn't enough space in this individual cherry grove biome. But they wouldn't have that problem for too long, as all the cartographers in the world began to work, trying to calculate where other low altitude cherry groves would be. And thankfully, it didn't take them too long to figure it out, as they had somehow worked out a formula for plotting where the cherry groves were on a map. And they were right most of the time. And so it was then that thousands of ships carrying millions of villagers were sent out all across the world to new cherry groves everywhere. And so it was from those villagers that thousands of cherry grove villages were built. And so let's fast forward a few hundred years after that point. And well, life was continuing to get better and better for everyone inside those villages, as the cherry villages were very popular amongst many villagers looking for a break from their normal, monotonous day-to-day -day life. And so it's because of that that many of these cherry grove villages would have many tourists coming into them, which meant that the cherry villagers were becoming very rich, as they were able to set up complex trade routes all across the world where they could transport both luxurious cherry goods as well as many of the holidaying villages. And they were able to do all of that very efficiently because every single cherry village was by the coast. And so it looked like nothing could stop them from prospering, as they were only going to be expanding and getting richer and richer, but that was until one day when everything changed. As it was on that day that there was a terrible storm in one of the cherry groves. It was so bad that sailors were forced to abandon their ships and swim to shore. But thankfully, even though they were swimming in these dangerous waters, everyone made it back safely to the villagers, as there were no casualties from that event. Well, not yet anyways. As while the sailors were sleeping that night in the villages, drowned were boarding that ship, as they too had to seek refuge from the storm, and this abandoned ship in the sea seemed the best place to do that, as they couldn't go into the villages at this time as they were being guarded by the Iron Golems. However, it was on that next morning when the sailors were just waking up and preparing to get back onto their ships that the sun began to shine down onto the world, at which, as the storm was over, caused every single one of those drowns to be exposed to sunlight, which burned every single one of them. And so, because of that, only their rotten flesh remained. Now, when the sailors did return to that ship later that day, they were ordered to go and check the decks to ensure that all of their goods weren't too damaged by that storm. And if they did that, they would have seen this disgusting rotten flesh everywhere. However, they were lazy and decided not to do that, and to instead just continue sailing across the world, as they did have a few months of sailing left to do before they reached 
their destination and they didn't want to waste any more time. And well, that decision was devastating for the world. As it was over those next few months that the rotten flesh began to melt into the food and clothing items that were being transported in that boat, which caused those items to be infected with the zombie virus that made up the drowned. And as they never went down to check any of their goods, they never noticed any of this happening. And so it was a few months later when the sailors went to dock at one of the cherry villages that they could smell that they were just off. However, they didn't want to get yelled at, as this was definitely going to be their fault, and so they decided to just throw some flowers on the top of all these goods to just mask the smell of this rotting flesh. And thankfully for them, it worked, as none of the goods smelled wrong anymore. And so it was then that they began taking all of these goods out of the boat and moving them to the ports. And they did this for hundreds of villages over the next few weeks when it began to happen. All those different villagers began to be infected by that zombie virus. As for some unknown reason, there was a delay on that infection at first, but now hundreds of villagers were all getting the virus simultaneously. And so thousands were killed in just a few hours, and hundreds of thousands of them were infected badly. And just as it looked like it couldn't get any worse for the cherry villagers, it began to thunder. Everyone who wasn't dying was now very scared, as it was only in those cherry villages that the villagers were getting the virus on levels unseen ever before. And it was also thundering, which to them, back in those ancient times, was a sign of even worse things to come. And so many of those who lived in those cherry villages feared that they were going to die. And so it was over the next few hours that thousands of those villagers whom hadn't been infected yet, fled their homes, and for them, well, that was the wise choice, as anyone who didn't leave those cherry villages over the next few hours were either infected by the zombie virus, or were struck down by lightning. And so when those fleers arrived in different villages all across the world and told everyone what happened, well, no one at first believed them, as it just didn't make sense how the cherry villagers, the wealthiest, the cleanest, and the most advanced villagers in the entire world could be infected by this virus so badly. And so they thought they must be lying. And so because of that, many of those villagers began to sail out to look for themselves at what was happening. But when they arrived in those cherry villages, all they saw were either dead villagers or zombies. So, they weren't lying. And so it's because of that, that everyone was just so confused as to how this could have happened. But, very quickly, they all agreed that what must have happened was that they angered the gods of the Cherry Grove, and they were being punished for destroying the natural landscape. And so it was because of their thinking that they all decided to never return to the Cherry Groves, and to just leave it alone for nature to take back control. And so it was due to that rule that over the next few hundred years that the cherry villagers would fall into despair and eventually would completely decay, leaving no more signs of them. Meaning that the cherry groves today have been left alone for millions of years, untouched by anyone, which might be the reason for its high levels of natural beauty. But now onto that final question, does the cherry grove hold a secret dimension within? Well, maybe there is a portal out there that can take you to the subscribing dimension. Who knows? But for now, probably not, as currently the cherry groves are left in their natural state, with cherry blossoms thriving throughout, waiting for you to explore. But wait, there is something that you need to know about these cherry groves, and that is, in the oceans and deserts right by them, you might find suspicious pieces of sand everywhere. That, when brushed gently, reveals a lost story from billions of years ago, before even the cherry grove existed. But to learn about that forgotten legend, you'll need to watch this video. 